Happy Thursday, saplings! Um, yes, we look weird today. Andy's got a weird head contraption, and I'm in a box. But we uh, we have a lot more of uh, Acts 8 here, and Philip and Ethiopian, or eunuch, to uh, discuss. Because we only got one whole verse. <laughs> so... Uh, we talked about angels last week, right? Because the angel of the Lord came to Philip. So, what are we going to talk about this week, Andy? I don't are you know. Gonna say hi? It. Hello, saplings. What a weird day today is. <laughs> All right, where do you want me to read? Uh, you better just start at 26 again. And just read till you tell me to stop. Uh, that's how what we normally do. Okay. <laughs> All right, saplings, Acts eight twenty six, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is desert. Okay, can we stop And he there? arose and went. Can we we stop already there? did this! No, 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 we didn't. We only got to the first part of the verse. Can we, can we stop for a second? <laughs> Gosh, these poor saplings. Yeah. Hey, where was the eunuch? Where does it say he was? Gaza? No? Right. Ethiopia? But, but where? Where does it says <clears throat> It says something about Gaza right there, right? This is a what? Desert. It's a desert place, right? So mm -hmm. you and I have talked with our saplings before about this whole idea of the wilderness experience right a desert experience someplace out there where god is training us he's teaching us we're supposed to be learning right but a lot of right. times uh, that learning experience involves having to have some insight from other people right so it doesn't matter if it's our books it doesn't matter if it's the word of god which ought to be the foundation anyway or it's right voices that God brings in. It's funny how this is a desert place, right? This is a place where this guy is being brought up, taught up, and he's going to be sent out, right? To What are you getting at, Andy? I'm 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 asking you actually. Expound What's the question? That. Yeah, the question is why does it have to be a desert place, Summer? Uh, because sometimes you need to limit your distractions. So if you would have let me read, um, then our saplings would know that he was he was studying, he was reading the Word of God. Yeah. Um, and he was just stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, like he he couldn't fully understand it because he didn't have anyone to teach him. And sometimes, um, sometimes that just happens. You know, like yeah. we pray. We always, you know, we tell you saplings to. Pray before you read and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal everything to you. And he does. But, you know, we all also have callings and jobs to do with other people. So mm. often you need a partner. You need someone to show up and help. Yeah, isn't that amazing that while we're in our wilderness, God took a high, influential, important man who had a great ministry, right? Was doing great things. And, and God said, y you need to cue into this guy. God does that same exact thing, only sometimes it's through the Bible, right? We key into a Bible character. We key into a story. We t key into something there. And then sometimes it happens, we get keyed into a book, Right, an author, some God send us some insight, right? He says, Hey, listen, for your wilderness experience, I need you to team up with this guy, this thought process, this and then every once in a while he'll he'll send us some filler stuff in with that, right? Like somebody out of the blue sends us a, a text, a message, a phone call, something that says, Hey, you need to check out this and it happens to coincide exactly with what God has for us, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's exactly what I said. Sometimes you just need a partner. Sometimes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have personally spent all day trying to figure something out and seek God on it. And then I talk to someone and they're like, oh yeah, sounds like this. And it's like, Psh. yep. 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 Uh, why didn't I call you 10 hours ago? You know? 
Yeah, but, but every, every, that's what God does. Like everyone has different insight, and He speaks to us all differently. Right, right, different voices. Right, but the the key. I love what you said. The key is in the desert moment. We're by ourselves. God has us captive. Right. There's mm -hmm. nobody to interfere with Moses's God moment. Right. right. It's funny because sometimes when we're in church or Bible study or even at home or with a group group of people, it's funny how there's interruptions in what God has for us. So how many times have we been sitting, listening to a message or really in tune with God and all of a sudden the phone rings or somebody hits us and says, hey, good to see you today or whatever it is. <laughs> Yeah, and we, we even just talked about, you know, like times that like I've gotten stuck like with the Holy Spirit and I'm around other people and I'm like, you know, like, shh, just like be quiet, be quiet because it's just, it can't, it can quench the spirit and it can, it can make it really hard to listen. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that... And like be in the, you know, we say be where you're supposed to be, but it's also yeah. like spiritually be where you're supposed to be and mentally be where you're supposed to be and like all those things it's not just like physically yeah well it's it's be where you're supposed to be and be open and ready and listen for what god has for you right so right. i mean i don't think i'm guessing that this unit guy is sitting studying and didn't expect in the desert to have some guy all of a sudden appear out of nowhere which is you know kind of what the story <laughs> implies it's like the old school uh old school text message yeah yep yep and that what, what do you do with that i mean, like all of a sudden there's a guy you here. listen you pay attention you hearken really this is a good seeds right there so are you gonna keep reading or i've been waiting for you to keep reading yeah sure yeah i don't know how much, how much you want to do for these saplings all right he arose and went and behold a man of ethiopia a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you read? Okay, okay. And he said, how can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come and sit with him. Did you the place of scripture where he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer. Yeah. So opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. As they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both to the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. When they were to come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So you look at that story, right? And you see... Pretty cool a bunch of really cool things that God was doing, right? We talk about all the time that God is specific in nature. Right? He's intentional mm -hmm. in nature. He, he has a plan, right, for a bigger picture. So out of all the guys in the world that he could have picked, he picked a eunuch. God picked a eunuch that had authority, power, access to the queen, right? We, those details are put in there for a reason, right? That God didn't, yeah. God, God had a bigger plan for this, right? Well, it's when this guy preaches, he's going to be preaching to people like with an authority. that have influence. Yep. Right. Yeah. So again, when we look at, I guess my question to you would be when we, we look at our own lives, right? We tend to get super narrow in nature. 
right? So how would you encourage our saplings, right, to, to start to really grasp and understand there's a bigger picture. God wants to do more with your life, probably, than just what you are able to grasp and think. I don't know. I think it's, I think that might even be too much to think about mm -hmm. because I've done that. Like, uh, I'm pretty sure that was our first conversation when we met. Um, God wants to do something with me and I don't know what it is. And I, here's all my gifts and here's all the things and I have no clue where I'm at. And um, since that point, it's changed and evolved like a million times and exponentially. So like, I think focusing on that is, is not, focusing on that is not good, but knowing that it's a thing is good. Like mm -hmm. it's what made me uncomfortable, right? In my job, my secular job. And it, it made me hungry and it made me want to chase God. Mm -hmm. So I think just, just knowing it and then just seeking him is where you have to start. Like, this guy was reading, he was trying, right? Like he was trying to figure it out and he just needed help. And God knew that, like God knew that he needed help and he sent him someone to just, you know, give him a, Philip didn't stay with him. He got raptured out of there, right? Yeah. Like, so somebody else, somebody else could help later, right? Um, the Holy Spirit could help later, but like he needed, he needed somebody in that time. And it's like, it's all, a very, it's all a little step, a little step, a little step. You don't wake up, get saved, and the next day you're a prophet. I mean, you could be, but, you know, it's yeah. it's usually like this relationship growth thing with God where you just have to – we all want the end game, right? We all want the big prize. We all want the big calling and the big I'm Moses and whatever, like, or some people don't. They're terrified of that. But, you know, people – want to be used by God. They want their Christian walk to be useful. So they're, you want to know what that stuff is and it drives you nuts when you don't know what it is, but we just have to focus on sitting still mm -hmm. and just, and just sometimes waiting for him to help us and waiting for, uh, you know, direction in things. And just in the meantime, keep reading, keep seeking, keep, trying to grow and just take whatever comes because he knows the best way to use you. You have no clue Amen. what it is. So Amen. beautiful. Well, I think that's uh, good for today. You probably better wrap that up. Well, you, know, you wrap it up. I just did all that work. All right. I'll wrap it up. You ready? Awesome. Well, saplings, uh, we began last week with this story. Uh, we've continued this week with the story. We're going to finish it next week. The story of Philip and surprising God opportunities. So we'll see you next time on Seeds.